and I'm back. Here's the first episode of Save or Cave where I review styles online to see if they're worth the price or not. Last week one of you DM'd me on Instagram to ask me if a $19.99 bodysuit was worthwhile compared to a $96 bodysuit. I did a deep dive into both products and here's my verdict. This is a good example of a shady retailer. They literally stole pictures from another brand and advertised it as their own. I gave them the benefit of the doubt and I look at the construction of the garment. You can clearly see that the lining is different as well as the straps. If you scroll down to the testimonials, red flags popped up immediately with all their positive glowing reviews. What did it for me was the pictures of the actual dupe bodysuit. The pictures were either bad quality or it did not look like the bodysuit advertised. Where's the compression lining that they were advertising? Even through the screen, the lace looks so cheap, it looks like it's gonna fall apart when you put it on, much less survive a wash cycle. So how much are you really saving if you're gonna toss it after one wash? The cost per wear is not worth the aggravation of buying this dupe. I recommend you save your money. Leave a comment on other products you'd like me to do a deep dive on. I'm back with another episode of Save or Cave. Ever wonder why the same or similar styles cost the way they do? In today's episode, we're gonna take a deep dive into slip dresses. Here are the five dresses I will review showing you what to look out for, the material used and the construction to understand the cost. This gentle hurt dress at $115 is made from silk charmeuse, which is the lower end of some fabrics. Here are the pattern sewing issue I have with this dress. The bust line is too tight, causing pulls across the bust line. Then you have the seams that are stretched, which is causing rippling effect at the side seam and the back seam. The hemline is stretched which is causing rippling. The hem is uneven from front to back. Lastly, the straps are not adjustable. It is also set too far apart which causes it to fall if you have sloping shoulders. This La Perla dress at $315 is made from silk chamoose. As you can see, the bust line isn't stretched. You can see that there isn't the same rippling at the back seam. The hemline does not have rippling or an unevenness. This Alexander Wang tee dress at $365 is made of silk chamoose with a lace trim. The dress is hard to tell the actual fit since the model is too thin for the dress. The cup size is collapsing, which means there's room for a fuller cup size. The back is collapsing at the neckline and the back seam is buckling because the model is too small for the size. The hemline looks good, but it could hike up with someone with the fuller behind. This Ray dress at $206 is made from Silk Crate Machine. Here's the good and bad of this dress. It's made without a back seam, which is more expensive way to cut into a bias dress. However, Crepe Machine is the lower end of silk fabrics. It's almost like a lining fabric. As you can see, it's semi-sheer with a fine spaghetti strap that isn't possible to make adjustable. This Joseph dress at $645 is made from satin back crepe, which is the mid-tier of silk fabrics. This slip dress is very well constructed. The bust line fits well. It's made without a back seam. There isn't any rippling at the side seam. The straps are adjustable with the right placement so they won't fall off the shoulders. Cutting a slip dress, this is the most expensive way to lay out the dress. It's cutting it on the bias on the same grain and the same way. The other way to save on consumption and a little bit of cost is to lay it opposite direction like this. To save on consumption, some brands will put a back seam, but this costs rippling at the back. The most inexpensive way to save on consumption is to put a back seam and lay the bias dress in two directions like this. After reviewing all the slip dresses, I would say if you want to save, get slip dress number two, and if you want to cave, get slip dress number five. Leave a comment let me know what other product you want me to do a price comparison on. Here's the good and bad of the Kins slip dress. From the pictures, the dress is cut on the narrow with fabric. This is why there is a seam at the hem at the front and back of the dress. The sewing construction looks like it's a mixed bag. If you look at the gray color, there's puckering at the seams, which you don't see in the navy color. The gray dress on top isn't as well fitted in the back as the navy dress on the bottom. The top three colorways, you can see there isn't puckering like the bottom three colors. I'm not sure if they're using a different sewing factories to do the production, or if it's just due to the lighting or Photoshop. The snowberry silk is a gimmick to me because it just means that the silk is made from silkworms from captivity as opposed to wild silkworms, despite mulberry silk being renowned for being the most expensive silk. The weight of the silk is 19 mummies, which is standard for silk moose. At this price, it's mass produced in the thousands, if not the tens and thousands to meet the MOQs that get the fabric and labor cost down. I can't recommend this as an investment piece, but if you're gonna buy it, you can buy it as an informed consumer. And we're back with another episode of Save Okay where I review button-down shirts. Here are things to look out for. The first thing to look out for is whether it's made at a shirting factory. 
Normally, shirting factories have flat film machines, which make a clean finish seam like this on both sides of the garment. You find this flat fill stitch at the side seams and sleeve and seam. Here, the channel things to look out for stitches per inch. Cotton shirting takes 12 to 14 stitches per inch, whereas silk takes minimum of 14 stitches per inch. The finer the fabric, the more stitches per inch you'll need. Buttons made with an X mark can withstand higher stress. Make sure the buttonhole stitches are dense. Having a gusset at the side seam is a good stress point for if you have wider hips or if you like to dig into your pockets a lot. If you have a fuller bust, look for a shirt with a bust out like this. And if you want to shape in your waist, look for waist starts in the front and back like this. If you want to see a long form YouTube video on dress shirts, leave a thumbs up comment. This shirt from J Inc. at $47.99 comes in two sizes. It's made of polyester. Here's my issue with the shirt. The shirt should appear to be oversized and not be actually oversized as the shirt is. If you look at the sleeve, it's neither drop shoulder or set in sleeve. Um, and then if you look at the back neck, it's already rolling back. So if you are actually wearing it, it will definitely fall backwards and roll backwards. This Dries Van Norton shirt is at $365. It's made 100% cotton. As you can see from the shirt, it appears to be oversized with the drop shoulders, the sleeve length, and where it's hitting below the hip. But proportionally, it's still slender to the fit of the model. This is how you properly do oversize. This Ralph Lauren shirt is $69.50. It comes in seven sizes and it's made of cotton. This shirt is cut with a relaxed fit. The shoulders are wide, the body is slightly roomy. My only two issues is that the sleeve cap looks a little bit short, but the sleeve length is good. The hemline is a little bit short for tucking. This Tom Brown shirt is $550 and is made of 100% cotton. Here are the five issues I have with this shirt. First, the overall fit is too tight, which is why the under placket is showing through. Two, the hip area is tight, so there's whisking around the belly. Three, the back looks flat for a round bottom. Four, the sleeve is hiking because the sleeve cap is short. Lastly, five, I'm not sure if this is a pattern sewing issue. The armhole is misaligned with the sleeve cap. Honorable mentions, if you want something with stretch, get something with spandex or elastin. This brand equipment makes pretty good shirts. I own a few myself. Don't have to tell a sleeve cap is too short. There are two factors. The first one is what we New Yorkers call hailing the taxi cap. So if you cannot lift your arm comfortably, where it's pulling from the front, the side seam, and your back, that means the sleeve cap has a fitting issue. It's too short or too narrow. This sleeve cap is short because there's drag lines pulling upwards like this. The two indicators on this shirt is on the out seam is angle upwards and then on the sleeve itself it has these drag lines. We clearly see on this Banana Republic shirt that the out seam is angle upwards. On the model you can see that it's hiking on the out seam which is a clear indicator that the sleeve cap is too short. On the Saint Laurent shirt you can see the sleeve opening is straight. On the model, on the out seam, you don't see the hiking as you saw in the Banana Republic shirt. I hope this answers your question. Be sure and we're back with another episode of Save or Cave where I review Grace Karen and Kate Spade. Kate Spade's style aesthetic is skewed towards feminine. Their fit is generously cut as you can see with this dress. For their woven styles, the sewing construction is very good. You can see they added a collar band, which is better construction for shirt collars. The stitches per inch in the front placket is tighter together, which is a better sewing finish. You can see the stripes in the placket is even, which means that it's a better cut and sewing finish. The stripes on both sides are matching, which also requires more skill in cutting and sewing. The fabric is a yarn dye, which is a higher finish in making the stripe fabric. For their sweater, it's overall pretty good, but here are the minor issues I have with the sweater. The armholes aren't even. You can see this side isn't set in as good. The knitting of the artwork could be better. The issue can be knitting with a yarn with a wrong gauge knitting machine, or the instruction given with the artwork resulted in this. It is not terrible, but it could be slightly improved. I couldn't find the brand Grace Karen. I found this brand, which I'm not going to review since I don't back these brands, which essentially uses slave labor and promote a disposal fashion mindset when I look at the price point. I hope this answers your question. And we're back with another episode of Save or Cave, where I review Club Monaco and Massimo Duty. For Club Monaco, it's still a good place to find good quality essential styles. They have been under the Ralph Lauren brand until recently. I'm not sure if this will change the quality of the clothes over time. It's too soon to tell. This ripped cardigan dress made 100% wool at $229 is pretty good price. The workmanship is pretty good. This dress at $259 is a miss for me. Not because it's made of polyester, but for the fit 
in some construction. The back is ill-fitting and poorly constructed. There is some puckering, which for polyester isn't acceptable for me. Puckering at the hemline could also be improved. Here, cashmere is a fairly decent quality. Overall, their knits is very good quality for their price. You see the quality is good. Massimo Duty is in the same tier market as Club Monaco. This sweater dress is a very good quality for the price. The workmanship is good. For all fit and quality of this shirt is good. The price is great. However, when it comes to this shirt, the sewing can use a little improvement. The tension of the sewing is causing puckering in these three places. Same thing with this jacket. Tension around the pocket is causing puckering. This knit dress has some tension issue in the knitting machine causing waviness in the stripe. Due to the tension issue, the stripes are matching from sleeve to body. You can see clearly the waviness in the bottom half of the dress. The stripes are winging at the sleeve cap. At the moderate price point, you can see some of these minor quality issues. They could be improved. This depends on someone in the production team with the know-how and the factory with the skill and proper machinery to do it. Okay, and I'm back for another episode of Save a Cave. And because you asked, I'm going to do sweater dresses next. You want to know why a sweater dress costs hundreds of dollars as opposed to a dress that's less than half the price. The most obvious is the material used. You have cashmere here compared to recycled polyester and tencel. But let's talk about craftsmanship. As you can see from this more expensive sweater, there are more refined stitches used in creating this sweater compared to the more simple stitches in this sweater. Let's go back to the basics. The cheapest way is to do cut and sew knits where you lay the pattern on top of the sweater knit and cut it up and sew it up. The second way is you knit the garment into panels like this. Then the panels are fashioned together with a sweater stitch. Typically, if you look at your sweaters, this is how the seaming looks like. However, in designer and luxury brands, they do seamless sweaters. This means you don't see the bulky seam on the wrong side of the sweater because it's knitted without the seam. As you can see, this lapel of the sweater jacket is knit without a seam. This requires a special knitting machine. Same thing with the elbow patch on this sweater. This is one of the reasons why designer sweaters are so expensive because the machinery that does this is very limited. The technique is also very intricate. It's very time consuming. Refined sweater finishing looks basic, but it's very intricate to make. Okay, let's talk about bat knitting and things to look out for. When there's problem with tension, gutters happen. This is what happens in the face of the knit. This happens when the tension is too loose. On fully fashioned sweaters, pay attention to the seams. Make sure that they're not crooked like this. At designer price point, you should not see artwork with this kind of finishing. I hope this helps you in your next sweater purchase. Here's my take on Everlane. Welcome back to my Save and Cave series. The good points of Everlane. They have metrics you can review on their website, showing you some of the transparency without giving you the secret sauce of their business. I know of Everlane when they first started because I've been interested in sustainable fashion before it became a hot topic. When they first started, they were more circular with their own factories. At some point, they have partnered up with independent factories. Their fabric and workmanship is decent, but it's not the best. From their prices, I could tell that the, either the workmanship or the material isn't the best in order to make their market for profit. I don't buy from Everlane. I would rather buy from Eileen Fisher, who is also a sustainable brand, which suits my quality standards better. They also have a metrics report on their website. I know that they use some sewing factories here in New York City. They use better fabrics and the fit is better than Everlane's. If you see the way the sleeve is fitting from Eileen Fisher, which falls better, compared to the Everlane sleeve where there's drag lines. Lastly, I want to point out Eileen Fisher is a lot more size inclusive as a brand compared to Everlane. If you want a brand for high quality size essentials, I suggest you save a bit more money to buy from Eileen Fisher, something that will last you longer, making cost per way of the purchase a worthwhile investment in the long run. If you have any other brands or styles you want me to review for the Saving Cave series, please leave a comment. Do you think Claude Monaco and Reese have low quality and poor construction, while Boss and Vince tend to run on the boxy side? I'm not sure what metrics you're using, but here are two items I own and the metrics I'm using to gauge your quality. This is a Claude Monaco top I bought over a decade ago. It's still in very good condition. As you can see, the sheer thin fabric is good. Even when I'm pulling on it, it does not tear. As you can see, this seam is very fine, but it's still holding out. I checked out the new styles, and here's a sweater I can recommend. I can see the workmanship is good. The material used is 100% cashmere. Based on these two metrics, 
I can say for certain that this is a better quality sweater than a fast fashion brand making a sweater out of acrylic with a lower knitting stitch. As for Vries, I did a review of this bustier that I bought from them. You can see the video in the link comment. As for Boss and Vince, you might be selecting styles that are suitable for your silhouette and kiwi. I have said that every brand designs around a silhouette, and these brands might not be suitable for your silhouette and kiwi. I know for the most part, I could find styles within these two brands that suits my body type. That being said, I know that not every style within these two brands work for my body type. It's why I put out two series of silhouettes and kiwi so you understand what your body type is and how to dress for it. If none of the brands I recommend works for you, then I suggest you use the free advice I'm giving you and find the brands that suit you. I hope this helps.